Okay, today we're going to talk about uh, an EXCM gantry from Festo and the uh, communication is going to be can open to a Festo PLC, a CPX CEC C or M1 version 3. So it's Codices version 3. Um, we don't need the M1, that's a soft motion PLC. It's just what I'm using today. You can use a C1 or any other Festo PLC or Codices PLC should be capable of all of that. The uh, the configuration tool, the Festo configuration tool is very simple. Um, I'm online right now, but when you're offline, you basically come in here and you modify your, your settings to reflect your actual hardware. I have an EXCM30. My workspace is 150 by 110 millimeters. Use the next button. This is my CAN open port that I'm using. I'm not using Control V Ethernet or Digital I.O. I'm using CAN open. That's my baud rate, my node ID. And again, that's my, my CAN open port. Hit the next button. These are just general limitations. You can go with defaults until you uh, decide what your project wants to be. Um, define your other parameters here. Speeds for homing. This is just offline information that was or, or taken with the project to allow for viewing after you go offline. Record table is just populated with some general moves of both the X and the Y target so that the transformation is going to occur through the software. Jog mode, individual access, gains, messages, and we can play around with the error messages. So it's not much to that. Um, when you go online, well, let's show you how to get online first. So FCT interface, you can scan, and then you select your drive. You say okay. You say okay. You go online. So of course your, uh, of course your Ethernet cable is plugged into your router, and you're on the same subnet, that kind of kind of thing. So we're online. Once we're online. Uh, the area down here for device control, um, you can use this to control the axis for commissioning purposes. Um, it's home the axis if you like. Homed. You can jog the axis. Um, incremental steps, you get the idea. Optimizes for manual tuning if you're using special motors, but typically the Festo gains will work for the Festo motors. So monitoring and diagnosis, do a read. It'll read out any, any faults that were there beforehand. Delete, clears them, and starts over. So. Again, I'm just going to leave this over here for status while we're running our codes to this PLC. So, go offline here. To create a project, it's not that difficult. Um, the uh, first thing you need to do is establish your PLC type. Add your can open manager because it's can open communications. Under tools, we have a device repository. These are the available PLCs that were installed. This is the PLC we're using today. These are the Festo products right here. And there's my 
registered EDS files for can open. So you simply add a device, come through here, you find the, uh, the Festo device tree, all the things that you've registered, and you pick the device. Um, I've already added the device, so I'm not going to add it again. And it brings in device. You give it a node ID. Obviously, the node must match that of the controller right here, the node ID. Set up some guard time. In default, I modified this so they're both at the same starting address word-wise. Um, then you need to install the library for Festo for the EXCM. This is available on the website. Simply go through here and add a library. Uh, I've installed all these libraries here, or for the most part, they're already installed. And so, so when you get done adding the library, you can then add your function blocks. So I started with adding tags and the addresses, and then we add the AOIs or function blocks themselves. So these are just general everyday function blocks, okay? Each function block in our library has a visualization available, and I have associated these with um, the function blocks that are in the code. So once everything is good, then you, of course, clean all, rebuild, Generate the code and that time download. Start the project. Turn off the FCT control. Turn on the can open control. Turn on the power. This reflects in the I.O. over here under the control and status words. So at this point, the drive is up and running. And we can use the EXCM library to control the axis. So I'm going to see if I can minimize this a little bit here. And I don't seem to be able to minimize it much more. So I am just going to do this. So over here with the EXCM libraries, I can uh, enter a record number and say execute. And you'll see over here that the record number one was executed. Those are the targets. We were to uh, go to the record table. You'll see that my X and Y are in fact 1515. So you have a target for X and Y, and then you have the actual position for X, Y. And it's all rising edge. So if I put a three in, hit go, it executes three. The uh, other way of controlling the axis is to do a move absolute, meaning we're not going to use the record table at all. Put in a 15, put in a I don't know, 140, uh, 100, acceleration, I don't know if it's 
it's capable of five, but uh, and go to range. But which one did I do here? So let's just pick some numbers here so I know. Now 145, 140, 145. So I told it to move to 135.40, it moved to 135.40 at that speed. If I change it to 1.5, and it moves to that position as well. So this move absolute, that's basically using direct mode. So there's your flexibility. So you can either use you know, direct mode moves for all your various moves and you can have the PLC rate values to the table before you execute each move. Or you can populate the tables in this record table right here in FCT and you can have them individually executed by this function block right here. And uh, that's about it. If you want to jog the axis, you can always jog the axis. Press and hold. I get a fault because I exceeded my limits. So I'll reset the fault. Just going to rehome it. Jogging each axis. And, and that's about it. So that's a simple way of showing how to um, control the axis with the EXCM library and communications from our PLC can open to our EXCM. Thanks.